point did you obviously talk about Willis and could you update what happened with Marcus Lee there? Don't know. I mean, his, his back tightened up, so uh, didn't think he could go, and that was fine. It gave uh, Isaac a chance. I thought Isaac was tremendous for the minutes he's playing. He's just got to get on the floor more, and he's got to be out there. And uh, I thought he tries and he fights, and he's so I was happy with how he played. I told uh, um, Tyler Eulis passed on good shots and took tough shots. They said, you can't do that. And if you go one for 12 and we lose a game because you're taking open shots and they're not going, that's fine. But you can't pass on open shots and then take tough shots. I thought Jamal was good, and, and obviously Derek and he really offensively did what they had to, to uh, for us to create a gap. So it was a good game. And, you know, we, we didn't have the energy that we've had in a couple games, but I'm just telling you, they're not machines. It's hard every game. Uh, we have three games in five days. I said, would you rather be practicing or playing games? Playing games. So we've got a tough road ahead of us, but that's fine. John, Isaiah had 10 rebounds. Jamal had nine. Is that something you instructed the guards to do after Marcus went out? or did they take Well, they, it was even before because he wasn't getting balls and one-handed rebound. I just said, you know, go get balls. Isaiah, I'm just trying to get him. He's just got to take shots and not worry about missing. And, um, he's shooting way better in practice. And I'm even saying our post players are scoring in practice, and they're just not carrying it over to a game right now. But they will. And the same with Isaiah. He didn't have to, you know, uh, make every shot. He just, there's a couple that if he made, it's, it creates a gap, especially when they're not playing. It makes him pay for that. But, um, like I said, we're, we're defending better. We defended way better than we did up there. Um, you know, we still broke down some, but we, you know, we did a better job today. Cal, usually when we see Jamal score this many points, he's hit a whole bunch of threes. Tonight it was more drives. He got 10 free throws. Is he Right, and, and it's exactly what game? we want, how we want him to play. He took one bailout three, and he knew it. And I said, why'd you do it? And, and what we were doing is we were drag screening, which meant the whole lane is open. So whoever had the ball, all you had to do was try to beat somebody on the bounce. Other than that one, I thought he played an outstanding game. Um, He's trying to defend better, a couple breakdowns defensively, and it's a mostly that we're not talking and communicating. Um, but, you know, uh, again, he goes three for six from the uh, three. That's perfect. And then get your other baskets going to the rim and ones, make free throws, nine out of ten, nine rebounds. You know, it's a good game. You know, two assists, a steal, a block. I mean, that's, he was, he did a little bit of everything today. Questions? How has his approach changed over the last five or six games? Uh, Jamal? Yeah. Well, again, instead of making hard plays, like I got this layup, but you watch this. You try to explain to him really, really good players make hard plays look easy. Bad players make easy plays look really hard. And he started the season. That's what he was doing. So you saw turnovers. You're like, why is he doing it? Tough shots. Um, now, if he has a shot, he's taking it. He's getting the ball by the man, so he's creating fouls. Um, you know, I, I, he's creating for his teammates. He's becoming the – he's a big guard. He's a well-rounded guard who can play in pick and roll. He can handle. He can score. He's a, he's a big lead guard is what he is. John, in what ways has Isaac improved the most since he got here? Well, he just fights. I mean, he goes after balls, and that's all you want guys to do. You're not going to get them all, but try. Attempt. Um, you can't, he's not afraid of contact. When there's contact, he's in the middle of it somehow. Um, and he gives us what we need. I mean, it's, you know, and, and he waited a long time to get this opportunity. Now he's got an opportunity to play, and he's taking advantage of it. But again, we, if we're without Alex and Marcus Lee, and we go to Texas A&M on game day with a day off. It's not going to be easy. Yeah, Rick said uh, he credited you guys with an adjustment you made on punter. Can you talk a little bit about what you guys did defensively? Well, we, uh, we played that middle pick and roll to where um, if we played it so that we could switch it or stay depending on what they did. And it gave them no easy baskets, which is they got a ton of those up there. The guy that hurt us was the Moore kid. And that, again, what he did was he beat us on the bounce. 
He had 15 in the first half or 14, whatever he had. And we said he's driving right, and he kept beating us on the bounce. He's, uh, he's a strong kid, and, and, and he hurt us making uh, uh, shots in the first half. He had uh, 21 points and 11 rebounds. But, you know, the kid, Potter didn't do as much, but again, he had 19 points. It's not like he, we shut him out. John, again, when you're looking out there at play, like just a couple shots that came right back on and just kept shooting the ball. Is there still a ceiling for him to go? What are you still want to Yeah, I, I just think, I think as he defends better and rebounds even better and becomes where he enjoys physical play, like he wants it, like this is how I want to play, he becomes as good as anybody. I mean, you think about it. He's 6'9", 6'10". His arms make him about 7'2". Think about that. Um, he's making free throws. He's confident. Um, he takes responsibility when, he, when he's playing poorly. He's not looking for to make excuses. Um, and everybody, you know, Tyler didn't play great today. Nine assists, two turns. He didn't play great today. He didn't play where he had been playing. Um, but what's changed our team is Derek. He made us a totally different team. The minute we said, you know, and then you say, well, why didn't you do it earlier? Didn't know. And when we went to it, it was obvious everybody could see. He just, he changed our team. And the other thing is he's coming every day. Doesn't mean he makes shots every day, but he's, he comes every day and gives you everything he has. John, you said on the teleconference Monday that with the Thursday, Saturday swing, you might change your approach to that. Are there any changes you can say? Probably do. The guys that played a lot of minutes will do uh, um, treatments and stretching and that kind of stuff, and then have the guys that didn't play as many minutes do individuals, and then we'll come together and maybe script some of our stuff that we want to use against them, and, and then we'll probably walk through their stuff before we get on the plane and go down there. And that'll be about it. And we'll have a shoot around the day of, get a great shoot around in, and let's go play a ball game against a really good team. And, uh, they just won their last game against Mississippi down there, and they won by 15. They played Tuesday, so they got a little gap in between the game. And, um, you know, but like I said, if it's practice for three days or play a game, they, I think all these kids would rather play games. Coach Barton said you guys are showing signs of a team that's starting to figure it out. Are, are you seeing those same sort of signs? Yeah, I think last game, the best part of last game is I could step away didn't do it on purpose, but I could step away and see that this team was empowered, that they were running and doing the things that we had taught, and they didn't need me there. Um, there were calls from the sideline, so it wasn't just random stuff, because I would watch tape. Who, who made that call? We made that call from the sideline. What, what about that? Who did that? We did that. So it wasn't just random. There were things we, we grounded out. Uh, guys played aggressive, um, and I walked away saying, you know what, this team is empowered now. They need to take us for the ride. It's not me driving them anymore. It's not me battling them anymore. I don't need to. Today I had a couple guys that, you know, we're telling you how to play. Just go do it. And, you know, so there were a couple guys that we got on, mostly just for scrappiness and stuff like that. They're dragging us now, and that's what I try to do every year. If I don't have a team empowered and it's us and we're dragging them, it's hard to advance. Your team's empowered and they want to keep going and they're having a the ball playing. They're holding each other accountable. I don't have to do it. They're doing it more than I am. It's the way you want it. Final call for questions.